Well, let me start by saying Vista wasn't the only municipality that had uh, large increases. Countywide, we had large increases in the homeless population. And uh, why do I feel that law enforcement and a, a camping ban is necessary? Let me say first, historically, uh, we've been using other laws that are on the California Penal Code books to enforce related behaviors associated with illegal camping. But we, in the last five years, have not been prosecuting since the beginning of the pandemic, these camping cases. It's important that we begin to look at enforcing this law because we need to really uh, bring the justice system back into this process. So one of the things I really want people to understand is I don't want anybody to go to jail. That's not the end game. That's not the goal. Jail is not the appropriate place to serve the needs of people who are uh, overwhelmingly addicted to drugs and suffering severe mental illness. That's not where we want them to wind up. We have, for the last five years in VISTA, built what we call the Homelessness Strategic Plan, an initiative of mine. And among that plan, we hired 12 individuals involved with outreach, housing navigation, benefits counseling, and other uh, ways to serve those who are living unsheltered in VISTA. And one of the mandates that I gave to the new staff that we hired that are in the encampments is to know every single person as a human being. I've often accompanied them into the encampments and I reach out and I shake hands with and I get to know the stories of the people who are living homeless in our streets. I visit them in the shelter after we sometimes are successful and get them into the shelter. I follow up. I really wanna know why when somebody says I wanna to go to the shelter, if there's not room or for whatever reason they can't be accommodated. And we've asked that question for four years. And when we built our new shelter in Vista in March and opened it this year, we try to eliminate all the reasons why people say no to shelter. Because in the many thousands of outreach conversations that our outreach workers have had, we have a 96% decline rate. We've statistically offered shelter to every single person living on shelter in Vista more than 20 times a piece. When we've offered over a series of years to one individual, numerous, maybe as many as 20 times to go to the shelter, when sheriff's deputies have let this person know that residing on public lands is not lawful and they cannot continue to do it. When we go into the encampments, we see a number of illegal behaviors. We see, number one, a lot of pollution. We see a lot of health hazards. We see sometimes uh, vulnerable people, whether that's seniors or sometimes even children who should not be living in what we call places not meant for human habitation. We see pollution of our waterways and sensitive environmental areas that were set aside to protect the habitat there. We see fire hazard, a lot of fire hazard. Our firefighters have been injured putting these fires out. People have been harmed and property has been harmed. Uh, we see lots of stolen bicycles and we see lots of stolen property. We see electrical cords that have been run to neighboring businesses and power and water and other resources that have been stolen. I've received dozens of letters from school teachers and parents at a local elementary school asking me to do something about the defecation and urination on the front door of their school. It's not right. People shouldn't be abandoned to live uh, in, a, in, a, you know, in a place that's not meant for human habitation. So the options are go to the shelter and that's what we hope that they will do. I'm getting back to your question. I know it's a very long winded answer and I apologize, but it's so important. Go to the shelter, accept the treatment uh, op options that we're offering the permanent support of housing and housing navigation. We want to get people, right now we're getting people out of the shelter in 43 and a half days. We want to bring that down to under 30 days. The shelter is not a place to go to live. It's a place to find your way to permanent supportive housing. And we hope for some people that they can find housing that's market rate that they can afford. We're helping people find roommate situations. We're, uh, we're entering a program right now to do master leasing so that two people who are leaving the homeless shelter who have met each other at the shelter can decide to share an apartment together. But tell me, tell me, you said you want the justice system involved, right. but you don't want to see people in jail. So right. how do you reconcile that? Yeah, it's really, it's really simple to understand. All of the options that are available that we are paying for, they're great options, but people are saying no. How do we bring some kind of involuntary or compulsory process to help somebody who's too addicted to drugs or too ill from mental illness to know that they're sick and would benefit from treatment. Without the ability to use the jail to get that person into custody so that we can evaluate them potentially for conservatorship, 
We need expanded access to medical facilities. Our emergency rooms right now are not equipped to handle uh, this. And frankly, our jails are not equipped to handle it right now either. And I know that. And we need to build better jail facilities with better medical staff and better medical facilities. But if we can't intervene to get somebody off the streets, see what happens is we write a ticket to somebody who is illegally camping or illegally defecating or they're intoxicated, whatever the, the issue is that is citable. But that person never appears in court. I asked a friend of mine who's a superior court judge, I said, what happens when someone repeatedly refuses to appear in court on a misdemeanor citation? The answer is he issues a bench warrant for their arrest and they still will not be compelled. They won't be put in handcuffs. They won't be transported to jail and they will not be put through the front door of the jail and physically compelled to appear before that judge. When we do not physically compel people who have serially violated the misdemeanor laws and misdemeanors are serious crimes. What do you attribute the increase in the population to? Well, uh, I attribute it largely to AB 109, which let 80,000 people out of our state prison populations. I also attribute it to uh, our cessation of enforcement of misdemeanor crimes. Most Californians are completely unaware of the fact that we have wholesale stopped enforcing misdemeanors. This is shoplifting. This is illegal camping, a whole host of crimes that are very serious crimes that carry a, a, a potential sentence of up to a year in jail. And again, it's not about locking people away forever. We want, well, here's, here's the, the, the brilliant design. We have a city prosecutor. If I can arrest someone, I can bring them to the table with a city prosecutor. Again, I don't want to put them in jail. I have the opportunity at that point to ask that person, the, the city prosecutor can ask them to enter a prosecution diversion agreement. They can voluntarily agree to enter shelter, to enter treatment, and to follow, a, it could be an outpatient plan. In most cases, it probably will. But when people say no to that, do you believe jail is where they belong? Absolutely. If we cannot, well, I, I would prefer to use conservatorship and we need to talk about conservatorship. Jail is always the last and worst place to treat people. Jail is never the right place it is never the first place, it is always the last place, and it is always the wrong place to help someone, always. But when all other options have been expired, it has to be on the table. When we remove all of the stick and try and solve the problem only with carrot, we never solve the problem. The, the problem is people that are living outside unsheltered, they have a spectrum of what we call uh, rational capacity to make decisions about their own welfare. Some of them, are so addicted and so severely mentally ill that they truly are not able to make those good decisions. They need to be brought under the state's LPS conservatorship law before a judge and a 12 person unanimous jury verdict is required. Mr. Mayor. Yes. I would love to talk to you about this all day. It's clear you're very passionate and we will save our conversation on conservatorship because that is all the time we have for this conversation. All right. But thank you very much for your insight. San Francisco has seven out of 10,000. We have 0.8 out of 10,000 in conservatorship. We've got to talk about that. I hope you'll have me back. You bet. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Mr. Mayor.